What is up everyone? It's your girl, Fly Girl Nina, and welcome back to Fly Girl Bartending. Whether you work at a craft bar or you bartend at home, learning how to make cocktail syrups is one of the best ways to instantly upgrade the taste of your cocktails, as well as other benefits like saving money, produce less waste, and you're less likely to have a gnarly hangover the next day because there's no additives or preservatives in the syrups. There are so many different types of cocktail syrups used to make popular cocktails, Today, we're only gonna be making four popular cocktail syrups. I will have future videos for the other cocktail syrups as well. And before we start, I just wanna say a couple of things. Number one, cocktail syrups can last in the fridge for up to a month. And number two, I'm gonna be making smaller quantities of each of these syrups, just cause I wanna show you guys how to make them. But of course, if you're gonna make a bunch of cocktails, then feel free to scale up the measurements to fit your needs. But anyway, let's go ahead and make these cocktail syrups. Okay, so we're gonna start off with the simplest of cocktail syrups, which is simple syrup. It's literally just equal parts of sugar and water. So heat a half cup of water until it reaches a boil. Then turn the heat down to a low temperature and add in your half cup of sugar and stir until it's dissolved. Turn off the heat and you're basically done. All that's left is to let it cool and then you could start making some drinks. And then when you're done, you could bottle it up and store it in the fridge. Next, we're gonna make cinnamon syrup. We're gonna grab a cinnamon stick and put it in a Ziploc bag. Using a muddler, I'm going to break the cinnamon stick just enough to allow more cinnamon flavor to be accessed, but you don't wanna do it too much because it will make it harder to strain out later. So we're gonna start boiling a half cup of water, just like the simple syrup. And once it's boiled, we will add in our crushed cinnamon stick and turn down the heat to a very low simmer. Basically, we're gonna let the water pull out those cinnamon flavors. So when I do a bigger batch, I usually let it simmer for like seven to 10 minutes, but because this batch is so small, I'm just gonna let it simmer until I see the color change drastically. Now we're gonna add a half cup of sugar and stir it until it's dissolved. Now turn off the heat and now you have cinnamon syrup. And for the very last step, all you have to do is just strain out the cinnamon stick because it's not very fun to sip on a cinnamon stick when you're drinking a cocktail. <laughs> Next, we're gonna make grenadine. Um, fun fact, grenadine is not supposed to be a cherry flavor, but it's actually pomegranate. So instead of using a water base, we're gonna use a fourth cup of pomegranate juice and set it to a boil. Once the pomegranate juice is boiled, turn the heat on low and stir until the sugar is dissolved. So we're gonna make this a more rich syrup. So we'll actually add twice the amount of sugar and that'll equal a half cup. Haha, <laughs> I also forgot I'm going to add a bar spoon of pomegranate molasses to give it more flavor and body. and a couple drops of rose water to break up the heavy flavors with some floral notes. And that's how to make grenadine. Last but not least, we're gonna make orgeat. So you can make orgeat a bunch of different ways. I personally find that this is the easiest way to make it. So we're gonna start by browning some slivered almonds on medium to high heat in our pot. Browning them will bring out the aromatic flavors of the almonds. We do not want to burn them, but we do want to see a little bit of color. So now we're gonna swap the water base to a half cup of almond milk, then bring that to a boil. And once that is boiled, add in a half cup of sugar and turn down the heat and stir until the sugar is dissolved. Next, we're gonna add a couple drops of orange flower water and rose water and stir. Now 
And also don't forget to strain out the almonds. And as the last step, a way you can make your syrup last longer is by adding just a little bit of alcohol to your syrup. In most cases, I would suggest a high proof vodka just because it is the most universal flavor. But because orja is mostly used in tiki drinks, I'm gonna add in a tiny bit of high proof rum. And that's how to make orja. Now you can use cocktail syrups in cocktails, mocktails, teas, coffees, desserts, honestly, up to your imagination. If you've never made cocktail syrups before, I hope you try these recipes in some cocktails and let me know in the comments how your drinks turned out for you, if they were better, if they tasted worse, or if you didn't taste any difference at all. I promise my feelings will not be hurt. <laughs> but anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you next time. Stay fly!